hello, hello, and welcome to this Artem Team Cup May edition. We are in our third week, and I am quarter pleased to give you your next match, Zookly versus Setsuna Fisei, otherwise known as Sorty Rum. Zookly has been another of our uh, fellow Tamers contestants inside this and has had some interesting stuff. While, of course, Sorty Rum has had a hard time against a lot of the players here, he has had a very strong team and he's been playing pretty well, all things considered. It's just, you know, hard when your opponents are at an additionally sort of curveball angle. Let's see, however, whether he can uh, show himself here against uh, Zookly in this engagement. So with that, it looks like they are just going to be getting into it now. So I will just be typing things out. We will be on the road. I'm just gonna wait for both of them to get in. I'm sure it will take nary a moment. Looks like there we go. Yep, they are just communicating with each other, making sure that uh, they understand who's sending first and who is sending second, because that is one of the one fun things about the um, best of two system is the fact that you do in fact get that delightful uh, just back and forth between your contestants there. Now, obviously, we'll have to see who gains the early lead here. Um, now, I, I'm kind of expecting the classic fellow tamer set that we see, namely a Golzi, a Calibus, things like that, out of uh, Zookly. But we'll have to see if something else uh, changes that over time there. So we're just waiting for both of them to get in. It won't be very much longer. It looks like they have sent. I might just have to... Th this could be the caster's cursed... Uh, once again, folks, every once in a while, it is that kind of thing where uh, you don't you don't keep on resetting it, and then it just doesn't change. So we'll have to see if that's the case. Ah, I think I see how it is. Um. Interesting. Could be just a name question there. Since Sorty Rum goes by Sorty Rum almost everywhere, but Setsuna Fusei eh, is uh, generally an awkward thing. But there we go, we are in. And with that, we are up and going here. Oh, whoops, let me just change one thing about that little overlay right there. Uh, apologies about that, folks. Just gonna identify precisely where that is and make sure that, that is out of the way there because it is certainly not something that is meant to be there. My apologies. In the meantime, though, as we are getting into the battle here, we do see that Surdy Rum has uh, still got a very powerful team, as we've seen before. And yes, we are seeing some of the classic fellow tamer setups there. I apologize for the uh, Luke Leal JD at the top there. I'm just working on uh, correcting that at this moment in time. There we are, perfect. Okay, so getting back to the match here, we will see that we've got an immediate Kinu ban out of Sorty Rum. We do see an immediate Yowler ban from Sorty Rum towards Zookly. This makes sense, obviously. You don't want to be dealing with a Kinu Yowler even if you're rocking it yourself, especially when you're planning on sort of leaning into that and uh, not wanting to address a lot. It's, it's just a valuable ban. Um, Trying to disrupt that core is always valuable, and Sorty Rum has a lot more options for dealing with the Kinu than he necessarily has the Yowler if all put all comes to shove. He has the Tireless Michelle, he does have the Desuterorna guys, but it's not necessarily the same thing that will help everywhere else. This does, however, leave open the Kinu Golzi for, uh, for Zookly, so this could be something that does backfire potentially. We do see the guys get picked. There is a Ragnet free as well. Well, we see the Naga Ragnet combo that is, as always, so valuable. That won't necessarily be amazing against the charged iron filings that we see come out of uh, Golzi if Golzi does get picked, but of course it will still bear value in its own way. We do see the Ragnet get picked up though, so that'll be pretty powerful to boot. Uh, this does mean that Volfi feels very strong here for Zookly. 
Uh, but no, we wind up seeing the Calibus. The Calibus is not going to like the Electro Punch, but most are rocking E Punch, and the high base defense means it's pretty. Mucus alongside that's going to be pretty reasonable in terms of uh, not being perturbed by that kind of aggression. Oh, whoops. Looks like the names are still there. My apologies, folks. I'm uh, not entirely sure how to get rid of those on this overlay, but I'm going to quickly double check. In the meantime, though, as we get into our second bans, we do see the uh, Valorant get banned out for um, Sturdy Rum right there. And this obviously makes a lot of sense. Still, you don't want more like quasi wind resist and a Vulfi resist on Sturdy Rum's side. We do see Sturdy Rum still pick up the uh, Yaller and the Mashuk. Sturdy Rum also banning the Valorant. This makes tons of sense on his side when he has so many things that really hate winds and want to poison things. The Tolkien still gets picked up by Zoopli. So it looks like we're going to have the same heated engagement that Sturdy Rum always has to deal with with his opponents, which is can he put enough pressure into the Tolkien? Can he keep his Ragnar alive to do that? Can he make enough things happen on this board before that happens? In the meantime, Zoopli rocking the immediate counter offense to uh, Sturdy Rum's turn one to guys strats how's this gonna change up so turn one as we can see here um there are some reasonable swaps for sorty rum but i don't know if he's actually going to want to do any of them what's likely is you still want to just madness buff here and try to power through however uh Calibus is a tall order for that at the best of times my chief issue is that there aren't really necessarily too many things that want to swap into a combination of Kinu and Calibus on Surdy Rum's team. Like, Nidrasil is literally the only other one I can think of that would want to come in here. You don't really want to be taking random beta bursts to the face. Now, granted, we could assume that this Kinu is leaving, but, um, uh, I'm not entirely sure about that, honestly. I think it's fairly reasonable to anticipate that this Ragnet is hitting into the Calibus, uh, but we do still see the uh, we do still see the Kinu bounce anyways for the minute, stealing the Ragnet. That makes much more sense. So this Ragnet theft obviously conserves the Calibus once again with its own Ecustodian there. A very good play there as the uh, Toxic Ink does double into the Nagai's there, triggering its reactive vial. Uh, Madness buff does still go down because Sorty Rum does continue to have balls of steel when it comes to setting those up. And with that, we will see our Nagai's fall down to under 30% as we get into our second turn there. A Fury will not do very much on this board at all, and this Nagai's could not be more threatened. This is, however, a very fine Nidrasil board, if that so changes. Uh, since it's Decidora, there's no potential for Cage, even if Sorty Rum has Cage on his own Ragnet, and the copy has happened there. These are all pretty fine. Uh, we do actually see the Nagai stay in and just go for a cheeky Psy Surge to outspeed the Mimit, trying to outspeed and underspeed with both, but he sacrifices the Nagai's in the process. The Hypnosis does come out onto the Calibus, but it's just too slow. This Calibus, so good at making sure that it happens. Um, we see a Hypnosis come down anticipating a swap, but it doesn't wind up happening there. I think ultimately that was still good value on Zookli's side, though, taking down the Nagai's with the double in of the Toxic Ink. I mean, granted, you took a ton of damage on your Mimit there from it, but ultimately, your Mimit technically... Uh, your Kala Mimit lead did its job, I suppose is really what I'm saying there. And additionally, it's not like Sorty Run put any pressure into that Calibus, which is something of a concern. Now, we do know this is a parrier Mashuk, from what we've seen previously, of our engagement uh, with Jade Dragon and Sorty Rum. So this means that we will be seeing a ton of perfect jabs, but what we won't be seeing is a ton of damage in the same vein as uh, Tireless Mashuk. This means that um, Golzi and Tolkien are more reasonable swap-ins for that Mimit if it chooses to be saved, but no, instead we just see the Piazzo jump out there, even though the Electric Custodian is still a thing. We see. We see the Mashuk wake up the sleeping Calibus as the charged iron filings charges down as well. 
creating some uh, taser action there on the Mimit, getting another 6.25% in alongside the nullification. Uh, we see the Toxic Ink, of course, come out. Thanks to the fact that Paul did wake up, thanks to the perfect jab on Sortie Run there. I'm kind of surprised that you woke the sleeping Calibus, but you know, you gotta make these plays. Uh, so, moving further and onwards, we do see that, um, we do see that this Calibus is still a massive problem. It is going to steadily get whittled down, but that's going to be rather irksome, I believe, for Sortie Room to manage. Uh, I do think that at this point, the Mashuk is actually not the worst candidate for trying to do that. Uh, we do see the Mimit does bounce out as the Kinu does hop right back in. And this is the problem is like this Calibus is a perfect raid boss. Uh, target this game like the Mashok and the Nidrasil can go into it but do they really do a good job of it it's rough as we can see as the defenses go down again to basic once again but the special defense just keeps going up we see more offense into the Kinu there as the Piazzo goes down um, which doesn't a staggering amount of damage but just not enough to hate slap landing onto the Mashok since this is Parry and Mashok it is not going to care about that damage uh, it looks like Zookly might be sacrificing their Kinu to try to get a, like a bit of burst off, but we could just as easily see another swap here to try to get more defenses onto this Lightning Rod Kala, which has proven very capable of taking hits. Uh, Charged Iron Filings is still up. I don't. I believe, however, we have seen an overexertion, so it makes sense for us to not anticipate anything on that. We do see the Nidrasil finally pop in on that side as the Hypnosis does come down, anticipating perhaps. Um, the hypnosis we see the energy drink on nidrasil common carrier of it is immune to that sleep good swap by sortie rum once again so this kinu should be feeling pretty uh lured out right now um the ragnet's probably going to be capable of getting exactly one more turn off but at this point my problem is it got whittled down before sortie rum was able to deal with the tolkien and the other way to deal with the tolkien is dead this leaves Yowler and like a Ragnet with 20, under 20% 20 health. That token's gonna be a problem. And I'm deeply concerned about how we're gonna see him deal with that. So the Kinu does swap out. We do see the Mimit hop in again as the Ragnet just stays a Ragnet. Charming beast. As uh, it does wind up taking the L for the allergic spread there. Allergic spread, obviously pretty good value there. The Toxic Ink actually does outspeed as the Ragnet does go down. Perhaps it did click that Electro Punch. Was kind of a risky play there instead of the uh, Charged Iron Filings. We do see the Tolkien come out in the space that is created of that, though. Uh, given that the... Mosh okay, oh no. This is not the board you want a Sortie Room against a Tolkien. A uh, startling amount of wins coming out there, still very threatening for Sorty Rum in these mid games. This is time and time and again we've seen. Uh, he's got, you know, two Toxics out against the Tolkien. It's like, oh boy, what am I going to do? I'm burned. I have no way to immediately pressure this. And there's still more Temps alive on my opponent's side. It's a big problem. Obviously, that's still a very good spot for him to focus, but he's going to be taking easily, easily 50% or more from the Windburst. Uh, more li like, and that's, that's a generous estimate. It's much more likely to be something like 70% from these Windbursts. It's not going to be a pretty number, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry to see that that's going to wind up being a thing. With that, we enter... Oh, that's what that was. Sorry, I finally figured out how to make that overlay go away. My apologies, folks. Uh, so we do see the Kinu swap in to make that token even tankier. This makes a lot of sense, given that this is such a powerful win condition for Zookly into this board, as the perfect jab does slam into that token alongside the Toxic Ink. It's still going to be taking a reasonable amount of damage, but as we can see, that is nowhere near enough, thanks to the combination of that Kinu buff and just the uh, build of this token, one can assume. Unless, of course, 
One other side of that is that this could be an un, like a not very highly invested uh, ninja cell, but that seems unusual into this. Even with PGAB support, you, you expect a ninja cell to be doing more damage to, than that on the toxic ink. Like it's still a reasonable one, but I feel like a lot of that damage was relying on ticks, which is always an important thing to an un, well an important thing to see. My other concern here is, depending on the speed of the Skinu, it could either sacrifice or beta burst this turn and either take out the Mashuk or buff up the Tolkien, both of which would be pretty nightmarish. If you see a Tornado beta burst this turn, that's really bad news for Sortie Run this match. With only the Yowler in the back and a full health Golzi not even touched this game, it's looking a bit risky, and it looks like that's exactly what we're going to see as the tornado smashes into the Nidra Cell, which does still live at 20%. We see the Beta Burst come down into the Mashuk that does not quite take it out at all. The sturdier spreads from Sorty Rum, keeping him in this game. We do see the Toxic Ink go down on the Kino instead, but this does mean that one more Wind Burst will be able to go off from this Tolkien. We still have the Calibus in the back. Is this perhaps turning for Sorty Rum, though? I don't know how much I want to trust that given how low the rest of his Thames are, but I was honestly expecting both of his Toxics to go down that turn. I'm very impressed that they survived, and it shows a certain aptitude with the spreading. Unfortunately, it does mean that the uh, Uppercut is going to slam into that Nidrasil and take it down, and the Wind Burst will take down the Mashuk as well. But taking down that Kinu and stopping yet more buffs from going on is obviously good, but with a Yowler and a Dream, I'm not entirely sure what he's going to be able to do against three separate Thames throwing Action Economy into him, one of which being a Golzi with Hold and no damage onto it. This is looking very, very risky for our champion there. So, um... Yeah, at this point, this is kind of looking a bit foregone, unfortunately, but um, that's just how it's going to wind up being in this particular first match there. Um, it's unfortunate to see, but uh, it, I don't see any way for Sorty Rum to come back from this one at this point. Once again, getting whittled down in that mid game due to, due to an ill timed Tolkien, just tearing apart his back line after a relatively even early engagement, right? Like, I mean, he didn't sacrifice his new guys for nothing. Yes, it was against some really awkward opponents, but it's just how it'd be. We see the show off come down here anyways as he tries to weather these assaults. As we can see, without the Kinu buffs, it's already pretty rough for him. But these, this is the way it goes. It's very hard to come back from this with only the one Tem, especially when you don't necessarily have a turn one attacking option. If we saw a clinch to take care of that Tolkien, we could have a different game right now, but that's not on standard Yowler sets. Standard Yowler sets only have hold one attacks, and that's really hurting our boy right now as he goes down to 11%. We'll be able to get the comebacker off on the Golzi, and that will take it down, but he still has two more Thames to go, and literally 11% of his health left. All this to all this Tolkien has to do is breathe on, on him and he goes down. So yeah, with that tornado, we do see it go down as um, the first game goes to Zookly. Well played, of course, to Sorty Rum inside that, but well played to Zookly for taking home the W. Very impressive indeed as we wait for our second game to go down. Obviously, the next question is how does Sorty Rum adapt to this? It's a pretty rough one when you have to try to deal with so many wins as the toxic core of Sorty Rum. Like, we've seen time and time and again, people have just taken advantage of that just due to his drafts. And it's frustrating, but this time he has been able to uh, take advantage of that in a guise early. If he's able to create a better draft for that perhaps, or at least like, um, I don't know, leverage it a bit more. Like the challenge is that first pick of Calibus was very devastating to that. But we'll see whether things turn around in our second game, which should be happening momentarily, folks. Oh yeah, no, we're already in. So into our second game, we see the Kinu ban again out for, well, actually, sorry, we see a Kinu ban this time for Zookly. Um, sorry, I f flipped things around there for a moment, but this still feels pretty valuable there. Um, we saw how many, we saw how much damage that Kinu did last game. 
in terms of just raid bossing up that Calibus and constantly providing value just through uh, consistent swaps, the beta burst, the hypno, all of those worked out very effectively into uh, Sturdy Run there. We see a mutual Kinu ban, always a good thing to see. So my next question is, yeah, no, we see immediately he goes for the Nagai's, recognizing it's strong against a lot of the things that Sukli would normally want to open into this. He's gonna want to be careful though. Because we could actually see, I, I kind of want to almost see a counter mimic pick here. Like that could be strong. Um, it depends on what sorty rum picks, I suppose. If he picks like a Nidris, if he picks like a Mashuk or something like that, that could be a bit bothersome for Zookly because then it's like, you know, giving yourself so, like giving yourself something that takes down your opponent while also giving your opponent something that isn't good. We see instead the Tolkien Calibus combo here. We still see the Nidrasil come out from Sorty Rum's spot, but is it going to be enough into the wind burst that will be coming in turn one from this Tolkien, which is not threatened on this board before that? In the meantime, we still have our Calibus turn one uh, threatening out this Nagai's. We see the turn two ban of Volaren. Are we going to see a similar Volaren ban from Sorty Rum, it seems likely given the tokens already been picked like what else are you gonna wind up banning if you give two wins to yourself that's gonna be even more agonizing but that's still such a hard place the lead of Tolkien Kala doing so much into Sorty Rum right now when he really wants to ban out both of those threats. This is one of those like insidious lead picks where it's like yes they're not necessarily the best right here but the burn's always good and on top of that, as I just said, like he wanted to ban both of these towns. Like sure, there were a lot of other things that can lead well here, but those just work out for him. Uh, we do see the Mimit get banned out there. This does actually make a lot of sense. Um, it does mean that he doesn't have to worry about a uh, no you on the rag on the ragnet like last game, which was pretty devastating if we can all be honest. Uh, definitely something that you don't want to repeat in game two if you're capable. So with that, we see Golzi get picked up next from Zookly. Um Yeah, no, it definitely cleaned up fairly well. My question is, will it manage to maintain the same degree of fervor without the Kinu? This remains to be seen, but um, I've yet to see a lot of the fellow tamers uh, Golzi's perform as effectively when they haven't been supported enough. But, you know, th th there are also games where they've still popped off. I believe Wiki Kernels has on occasion uh, done some pretty intimidating things, but we'll have to see how Zookly winds up handling it. With this in mind, we go in to our second of our best of three here. If, if Sortyrum takes back this second game, then things will go to a 1-1. If Zookly winds up taking this, then that's three points to Zookly this, uh, this particular match. So with that, looking at our potential swaps, we will find ourselves noticing that, you know, we can still see a Ragnet come in here. We don't actually see any swaps on Zookly's side because it's still devastating into the Nagai's. We see the uh, Reactive Vile does pop off. giving it a good bit of buffs there, and the spores knocking off the additional poison, making it that much more resilient, but the wind burst doubling into it this turn, pretty intimidating. Uh, um, Zookly correctly assuming that there's not gonna be much damage into the token this turn, expecting that madness buff, and boy, the full support turn really meant that Zookly was able to be aggro with the uh, aggression there. Man, that was a tautological sentence. Anyways, um, one thing that's fun, however, here is the fact that this Nagai's is still fairly healthy. Uh, I think it is genuinely best for Nagai's to de for uh, Sorty Rum to dab out with it, though. I don't think it wants to stay on this board. Like, technically, you want a Nagai's Fury, but if you do that, then Calibus just kills you. We see a Strangle instead as the token bounces for the Golzi. Um, yeah, no, that ultra priority strangle there coming out as the beta burst slaps into the calibus and actually winds up taking it down to half of health plus a single percent definitely an interesting thing to see there as sorty rum defies expectations says i'm not wasting my limited number of uh 
Decidor returns there, obviously important. You wind up losing a net two swapping in and out, so it's a lot of momentum that you lose there. Instead, it's better, in his opinion, to just charge into this. If he can size search the Golzi, that's still very powerful. However, if he loses this Nagai's, that's a problem, and he just got strangled. So this is gonna require a relatively hard reposition unless he's careful. We do see the Electric Custodian Nagai's come, uh, Ragnet come out, but the problem is, Charged Iron Filings is spread, and that is one of the main moves that Golzi clicks. And then a guys goes down before it's able to get another move off, thanks to the strangle. Well played by Zookli inside this particular turn, as Lampadina comes in, protecting nothing, sadly. Um, with this, we do see our uh, Ninja Seal come back into the board here, still very capable of weathering a lot of the aggression from Zookli's side. But I would say that despite some early HP loss and the HP differential technically being almost on Surgery Room's side, I still feel like Zookli's in a better position having not lost such a key tool of his team. I think this is one of the challenges of Nagai's is that um, you really want to make the most of it out, uh, make the most out of it when you have it. And sometimes leading it cannot be the way to do that. But still, though, it did get some hard damage in, and it forced some repositions out of Zookli, which is obviously very valuable here. With this, the Oshidashi slams into Lampadina. We see how much damage that winds up doing there. This Golzi definitely offensively specced. We see the spores actually come out into the Golzi there, getting the Triapothecary off alongside the Hypnosis onto the Calibus. So we're trying to see some control turns here. I'm kind of surprised by the absence of Toxic Ink, uh, given the fact that the only... Yeah, no, there was nothing that would really eat a Toxic Ink there. Unless that was to conserve stamina, but that was at full stamina as well, so that doesn't make sense either. If that was just for the poison tanks, my concern there continues to be the fact that um, if you wind up making those kinds of decisions, then you wind up leaving a Golzi alive for longer than you actually wanted to. As it gets the charged iron filings off once again, nullifying these two targets and rendering them a bit more vulnerable there. We also see, of course, the Cs, meaning that um, if, if Zookli had sleeping threats here, uh, then that would be a problem. We do see the Pienzo still land in there, obviously still very frightening. As the um, Spores does come down on Lampadina. So the combination of this aggression will still take down the Golzi, but I think that last turn of value still was pretty good there for it. The Volfi coming in means that, I mean, it's definitely valid that um, the Nidrasil wound up uh, having the Toxic Ink ready for this turn. I think he still would have had stamina for that, but that's that's just how it do. With this in mind, uh, with that Golzi down, things can start pedaling back into Sorty Room's control, though. I'm just wary about that nit that um, Tolkien coming down again. This time, however, Sorty Rum has taken a clue from his previous games and made sure that he doesn't get caught out by that Volfi again. Volfi's, well, plague users in general with handcuffs, time and time and again, trapping out his Ragnet, keeping it onto the board and executing it before it's able to deal with the Tolkien, but he does not let that happen again this time. This does mean that we are able to see a show off come down on the other side, but we do see a Bark Shield, very powerful support against this Yowler, less against the special attackers that I'm worried about there. The Tolkien's still a special attacker, the Volfi's still a special attacker. Volfi, fortunately, does not do very much into this field at all and gets punched into the Shadow Realm by Mashuk. That's more taken care of here. And this definitely stymies a lot of the aggression that the Calibus would want to do. Plus two defense is pretty nightmarish. The Yowler will still probably be able to do a reasonable amount of damage, but it will no longer be the mind-bending atrocities that one can occasionally see out of Savage Suplex. The Tolkien continues to be my concern, with those windbursts and tornadoes feeling far too threatening into this. We see a perfect jab into Toxic Ink. I'm assuming that's the Toxic Ink coming down here. As the Dust Vortex slams into it, we do see the Toxic Ink come down as well. That's some reasonable damage into this very chonky, in comparison, Volpe. The Suplex doing hardly anything into the plus two 
parrier Mashuk. The parrier really showing how much defense scales into it. Um, obviously, it's less reliable in terms of like high tier aggression, but as we can see there, it just weathered that like nobody's business. Only going down to 41% from combined aggression this turn. With this, we see another Plague attempting to lock in the field on um, Surtirum's side there. It will only last one more turn, obviously, as the Mashuk will be able to uh, stop this this turn. The Volfi will die to Poison Ticks. The Spores goes down, actually um, giving some much-needed regen to the Mashuk as this uh, not attacking the Yowler is really turning into a problem here for Zookly. Sort of I'm showing a uh, reserved and calculated approach this game that's definitely getting him ahead as he's able to actually conserve some of his tools. On top of this, he still has the Ragnet available to swap in for this Tolkien. He's taking this back. Right, so obviously if I'm Zookly, then I want to just kill this Naga th kill this Nidrasil as fast as possible. It needs to go down, and you probably still target the Ragnet that's coming in there. Although it is instead a Yowler, so uh, Sorty Rum playing it safe here. I'm actually surprised that we saw the tornado on the spot that wasn't trapped, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, that, that just felt curious out of Zookly there when you had a trapped Nidrasil just waiting to get tornadoed in the face there. Obviously, we've still seen a lot of spores come down rather than anything else. It appears more that um, Sergirum's just looking to like make these calcs a bit more favorable for him, perhaps. Just throwing the poison on there. Uh, the Tripothecary getting its value over the course of the game. My concern with that strategy, of course, is that um, poison's only good if you don't die first. And that is triply the case when we see a Tolkien on this board here. However, if that Tolkien's going to keep tornadoing Yowlers, uh, by attacking the Mashuk that's able to swap out, then obviously that's going to be a bit more of a concern, but uh, Sordirum's playing it safe this game, and it's definitely paying off. The uh, stamina of this Yeller cannot keep up with this either. We see the Fire Tornado come down onto the Ninja Cell. This probably is why we saw the Tornado onto the Mashuk last turn, as it still does go down. The Suplex smashing into the Tolkien regardless. Still some very good damage into that. Even though it did not get targeted, did not get the comeback or this turn, the exhaust combined with the poison is going to be pretty devastating for our Tolkien. The Macha immediately bringing this Yowler back up to full, uh, or relatively full. The 40% uh, there alongside the standard Rest Heal being more than enough to bring this Yowler up to a more favorable position. We see the Ragnet come in off of the created space, and this Tolkien the primary win condition of Azukli this game, given how well it can do into a lot of the toxics there, just not feeling so hot. Looks like uh, repositioning into the Yaller as the central win condition is going to wind up being the play. We do see a last minute tornado come down into the Yowler before it goes down. My question is, will we be seeing a hibernate this turn out of what's likely also a Macha Bear? And that is precisely what we see as the hibernate comes down. The real devil of a Yowler is rarely just its bulk. It's rarely just its aggression. It's the fact that it has such good health regen that is assisted by Macha removing cold or and freeze on rest. We see the H-slap come down into the Ragnet this turn, getting that minus defense on there. It's now down to minus one. The Electro Punch, as we can see there, with the combined power Mucus and Lightning Rod does barely anything. Roughly 25% to a Calibus is not the number. Th those are rookie numbers as far as Ragnet's concerned. Usually people invest very heavily into attack with it. So that's pretty impressive to see. And as we can see, this Yowler's basically, you know, took a little pit stop. Got, got a little top up, got its uh, dings and dents scraped off, and now it's ready to come out swinging again. And that's the power of Hibernate right now with Matcha. It's just some very impressive uh, recovery, as you can see. Uh, now Zookly has to spend all this time whittling it down again when he spent so much into it. This is this is the constant trail of Yowler. We do see, of course, the double show-off, however, on Zookly's side, with no buffs on Sorty Rum's Yowler. I do think I know who's winning the Bear Wars. The problem is, in this instance, Sorty is the one with, like, more other tools here. And if I recall correctly, uh, Piazza Electric's blow is available as it does go down and will, without Taser even, take down 
Arcalibus here, which is important because the Mucus would obviously block the burn. So with the Calibus down, we see the Suplex is free to land on the Yowler. Uh, this does mean we're going to be seeing a Comebacker Suplex back. That's going to be pretty devastating alongside that. But it goes into the Ragnet. Unfortunate. If that had gone into the Yowler, I'd figure this game was basically done. Uh, we do still see the Mashook in the back. That's going to be an absolute pain. Plus two for this Yowler to take down. It looks like Sordium is going to take this back to a tie. It's going to be a bit of a whittle down here, but I don't think there's any way to say in good conscience that Zookly's in a good spot. Uh, one Yowler, even with plus two against these monolithic Thames, is going to be very dangerous for Zookly to properly compete with. Fortunately, we do not see the same suplex down this turn, but at the same time, that exhaust is already just a horrifying thing to deal with as the show off comes down on Sordi Rum's side, meaning it's just going to have that much more stamina to work with there. We see the hibernate come down out of Sukli's Yowler. This obviously makes a lot of sense. You want to make sure you get that, but thanks to the exhaust, he does actually overexert. Or does he? He doesn't. That was exactly enough stamina. Never mind. I'm a fool. As the perfect jab still comes down onto the second turn alongside the second savage suplex. W Macho will be taking it up, but it does not live the turn. The double P jab and the suplex taking down Zukli in a single hit. Well done, Sorty Rum taking back game two. Well, that was definitely a very impressive showing from Sorty Rum that game. Uh, definitely showing us that despite some awkward setups in his previous games, he was definitely able to take advantage of some of the board states that were presented to him by Zookly this game, and was also able to play around the tricks of Zookly more. It was just generally nice to see. Uh, with that, I will obviously, um, quickly highlight some upcoming matches, uh, specifically... Tomorrow, we have the fortune of seeing Srizen versus Wiki Colonel uh, from Group D at roughly 11.30 UTC. So uh, make sure that you're there for that. That's going to be a fantastic game. Obviously, once again, Srizen and Wiki Colonel, some pretty devastating aggressions between each other, as we've seen before. Um, after that, we have JD and Luke Leal in our uh, next slot, which is at 10 p.m. Um, in like once again UTC there so that should be pretty fun to see as well very exciting stuff in the meantime I'd like to thank everybody who's come who stopped by to check out these matches obviously once again this is uh, one point to either uh, well to both of our contestants here Zookly and Sorty Rum having both picked up a game if you'd like to check out our standings be sure to click exclamation standings in our Twitch stream if you're checking this out on YouTube we will make sure to have a link below there and uh, yeah once again thank you so much I've been Quarter and I hope that everybody has has a fantastic night.